Hi guys, let's take a quick look at a video called Signs of the Last Day with Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, powerful. <laughs> it's not even six minutes long, is accompanied by this nauseating humming you get so often on Islam apologist videos. And the topic is Muhammad, the Islamic messenger and something called end times, ominous. The person talking is Islam apologist Hamza Yusuf. He opens with a claim that Muslims in the past were not really interested in demonstrating the existence of their God, which for them was a given, but had to somehow validate the existence of their number one prophet in Islam, Muhammad. Their obsession was proving the prophecy of the prophet. Today, we know that Muhammad did not exist, at least not the way it is described in the Zona, that Mecca did not exist at the time, at least not the way it is described in the Zona, and that the Quran did not yet exist. Now, looking at the definition of prophet, we see two things. Number one, a go-between, and number two, someone who prophesizes. Now, if a God is unable to communicate with its own creation, unable to convey the wishes and commands that are so important to it, a repetition device is needed, or many repetition devices, where they get fed some lines and they need to regurgitate them again and again, so that the recipients, people who were created without these lines, hear them over and over and act accordingly. And if they do, they get promised a reward. If they don't, they are threatened with punishment when they are dead. So a prophet is much like an MP3 player. Record some stuff and play it back. Except that any cheap MP3 player is more accurate than a prophet and does not contradict itself if programmed correctly. Now, the second function of the prophet is that she or he is supposed to make statements about something that will happen in the future, where prophecies must adhere to the three P's of prophecies. Precision, precision, and precision. Okay, now let's apply all that. So a prophet says things to people and talks about stuff in the future. Now, if someone, person P, does that, do I have any reason to assume that this P is a prophet? No, of course not. Because I can't verify the existence of gods. I am unable to verify which god might have sent this person P, instead of telling me directly. And number three, I can't know whether what this person P says will indeed happen, because I can't see into the future. So Hamza Yusuf fails while still Because if you first prove statement. he was a prophet, ipso facto, <laughs> there must be a God because he sent him. It's even a lot worse. He doesn't seem to know what ipso facto means and claims that if P says X, this proves G. It doesn't. There is no immediate link between person P and one of the gods, let alone the specific god. So it is a non sequitur, something that does not follow from what was said. Now person P can just make stuff up, can be confused, mistaken or plain wrong. There's no gods required at all. And if someone a thousand years later writes this, we can't even assume this P existed at all without any further evidence. I mean, Imam al Bayhaqi wrote a huge uh, multi-volume work called Dala'il al nabuwa And he said, here's the proof that he's a prophet. So what if some dude wrote about something? I can write a lot about Cinderella. Does that show she existed or that she was right? The Prophet predicted many, many things that have come true. Now, Yusuf does not seem to understand the difference between prediction, something that follows based on observation or empirical evidence like the weather report, and a prophecy, which is based on nothing at all. Now, Professor Goodman from Harvard tries to explain to people what the differences are and goes to great lengths to describe the project and its components. Why doesn't somebody like Yusuf ever look at things like that? 
And just to make this clear, if I then go, what Professor Goodman says, a valid prophecy is not, it will rain this year in Britain. It would be that if there were only one EU lottery, that on the 28th of July 2028, the numbers that will be drawn in Brussels for the EU lottery at 1900 local time are 15, 21, so, and so on. Now that would be a prophecy. It is precise. It is not ambiguous. It does not require interpretation. But it could still be sheer luck because people win the lottery every week. So even if a prophecy turns out to be correct, it does not validate the claim this was made by a prophet and definitely does not prove a god or a specific god exists. Now in the video, Yusuf now throws out masses of red herrings, totally irrelevant to showing that Muhammad was indeed a prophet. But he does say something interesting. He claims Which that, doesn't mean the end of times around the corner. Well, that is exactly what Islamic texts, hadiths, crazy as authentic, what they say. That Muhammad was the leader of an end time cult where they expected the universe to simply stop existing within a few years. So it's actually Yusuf here who shows that Muhammad was wrong. But he can't stop himself from, some, from just you know, sounding utterly silly, saying that the end times mentioned a thousand years ago are closer today. Duh, yeah, a thousand years closer. <laughs> That's not very difficult. To people. The Prophet predicted same-sex marriage. Did Muhammad predict same-sex marriage? Well, what we find is that 99% of all the stories around the end times in Islam are simply things that don't happen in normal times. So they came up with absurd stories just to make an impression. So the more outrageous, the better. Yusuf calls the hadith on same-sex marriage sound. On what basis does he do this? We don't know because we're not given a reference or any further information. But just three minutes of digging then comes up with the explanation why he does not do so. Of course he will not tell you it's fabricated. It sounds so outrageous and fits his agenda. So don't let facts stand in the way of a perfectly good lie. And here's a long, long list of possible things that can happen or can indicate the advent of the last hour according to Islamic texts in regarding the end times with all the quirky proceedings that are associated with this silly idea, where this is nothing new and many religions had this eschatology concept in their repertoire. Now I will skip some of these really outrageous claims, like buildings higher than mountains or flying and so, as they are simply too primitive. And even a gullible Muslim must scratch their head and go, really? <laughs> and the talking over the phone turns out to be phony and not more. So if you look at the text, it, it, it's ridiculous. It's, it's just a fabrication. And the same is true for the next claim, something that's been tried for a thousand years since the claim is in the Quran and could never be verified. So he simply repeats what he knows is false, hoping that people will simply accept it and only those with intact critical thinking capabilities like me will actually go and check. No, there is no prophecy or prediction regarding anyone with the name Muhammad in previous religious texts, no matter how hard you try. It's the internet, man. This is why Islam is dying. It can't handle facts and reality. Now Yusuf bamboozles his audience, claiming Hindu Vedas mention Muhammad. But he shoots himself in the foot because it would make their God or Allah just another God of many if Muslims must now accept Hindu texts. But the problem here is a different one. It's known as quote mining. Muslim apologists find the words an illiterate foreigner teacher will appear. Muhammadah is his name and he will give religion to his fifth class companions. Nothing really makes sense here, but the Muhammadah is sufficiently close to Muhammad. So screw the rest, just mention the similarity. Well, 
until you read the entire text, that is, which typically Muslims will not do. Now, it turns out that this Mahamada is the incarnation of a demon in India, an evil ghost opposing Hindus. So, Muslims can believe Zakir Naik at their peril, and if anyone is interested in this nonsense, there's an entire section only dedicated to claims like these. And the same is true when it comes to refuting the claims about the Torah or Old Testament. And the video ends with a really weak disclaimer, where everyone can believe anything as they please. Now, would I, as a Muslim, take this as something valuable or as a basis of my faith or even a confirmation of what I already believe? No, come on. Anyone who hears this incredibly weak presentation should do only two things, doubt and check. Have fun.